in the healthy farms during the, those 12 first weeks. We didn't really find mycoplasma high pneumonia, uh, pneumonia as such, whereas in the diseased farms we did, and very often even, like up to 40%. Um, so to, to sum up, really, what we found is that these techniques, so biocheck, healthy climate solutions, and uh, pathosense are really useful tools for the practitioners um, to use to identify different kinds of problems on the farms. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me in our podcast studios this week is Friso Griffiu. Uh, Friso is a PhD student at the faculty of the University of Ghent and is also working with Darling and Greenings. Friso, thank you so much for spending time with us this week. Uh, why don't you give us a little bit of background on yourself? Introduce yourself for the audience, if you would. Hi, Clayton. Uh, thanks for having me, first of all. Uh, secondly, yeah, so my name is Friso Griffiu. Um, I'm a PhD student or part-time PhD student at the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine of the Ghent University. And I also uh, work full-time at Darling Ingredients, um, which is a, a company that works in animal byproducts. Imagine being able to monitor your animals and farm climate remotely. The Healthy Climate Monitor combines camera and sensor data, and they will give you real-time insight into behavior, temperature, CO2, relative humidity, ammonia, and air pressure, light intensity, and particulate matter. We give you insight, and you get control. Find us at HealthyClimateMonitor.com. And you're uh, a busy guy working full time and uh, doing your studies. So we appreciate the time. Um, let's get right to it. You've been a part of a project looking at some environmental parameters, uh, biosecurity on both healthy and disease pig farms in Europe. Talk to us a little bit about the project. You know, what are, what are you doing to get farms into either category and what are you learning from those parameters when you assess them? So... This is part of a European ECRAT project. Um, and what we're doing is we're working together with uh, five partners in total. Uh, Belgium, uh, Poland, Hungary, uh, Italy, and uh, Greece right now. Uh, and what we're doing is that we're screening, like you said, healthy and diseased farms. Um, basically, it's a kind of general project on the porcine disease complex. Um, so what we did is, first of all, we selected healthy farms and we did that based on a set of uh, pre-existing parameters what is the abortion rate is it really a healthy farm uh, what is the recurrence rate of the sows what is the mortality rate um, in both the, the fattening and the, the nursery units um, and based on that we then did some more screening to see whether or not they're really uh, really fit for for our project uh, and then we uh, Basically, what we did is that we um, enveloped them in um, a screening method, a weekly screening uh, pattern, where we took weekly samples for 13 weeks, uh, and we uh, looked at different technologies that we implemented in those uh, those healthy and those diseased farms. Um, and what we did in the healthy farms is we did a biocheck, which you discussed with, uh, with one of my co-promoters, Jeroen Wolf, on episode 119. And we also used the Healthy Climate Monitor, which you discussed with uh, Dr. Yuzin Kilov at uh, episode eight, uh, 85. And then additionally on that, we also, for the, the samplings, to see what uh, the uh, different parameters were, we used the Potosense platform, which is a new diagnostical platform uh, to, without prior knowledge of the, uh, the pathogens that are involved, uh, to see what's going on. So it's a metagenomics platform. You really sequence what's uh, in the sample. On the diseased side, we did it a little different. We uh, took it on an acute basis. So farmers could uh, go, come to us to see, okay, uh, we, we have some problems. Can you take a look at it? Can, can we try to solve uh, this or find out what's, uh, what's going wrong? So maybe to jump into the general findings already, um, a bit of background on the amount of farms first. And for the healthy farms, we sampled uh, 14 healthy farms across Europe. And for the diseased farms, we exceeded well over 100. So it's really an extensive, really a big project. And maybe to discuss the biosecurity parameters that we found, in general, the healthy farms had 
um, biosecurity parameters according to the biocheck.ugent um, uh, questionnaire better than the benchmark, so better than the global average and the country average. Uh, and the diseased, no surprise there, had generally, not in all cases, but generally lower biosecurity scores compared to the benchmark. Regarding environmental parameters, in the healthy farms, we saw, surprisingly, actually, that there was quite a bit of um, yeah, parameters going the wrong way. Uh, for example, ammonia levels were too high, CO2 levels were too high, temperature curves were not exactly right. But in general, it was within reason. Whereas in the diseased farms, we could really use the Healthy Climate Monitor to see, okay, what is going wrong in the environment at a specific time. So it's really, uh, from that point of view, it's a useful tool to use uh, in, in research, but also for the, the practitioners. And then lastly, the um, the pathogen spread or the pathogen circulation infection pressure. What we could see is that on healthy farms, surprisingly, again, you, know, you would uh, imagine a healthy farm, there's not a lot of pathogen circulating maybe, or it's at least quite, uh, quite stable. But we saw really a lot of pathogen circulations, up to 17 viruses uh, that circulated, unique viruses that circulated throughout um, a specific farm or throughout the longitudinal follow-up, and up to 27 different bacterial species. So this is really a lot, more than, uh, than we would have expected. Um, but then also we could see that like uh, PERS or swine influenza, they circulated also, but not very highly. And then if we compare that to the diseased farms, we could see that even though we could pick up similar pathogens using that Pathosense platform, um, we saw that the more serious bacteria were most, uh, more often involved and that at certain time points, the infection pressure was also higher. So a higher di diversity of different viruses and bacteria were, were found on those farms. Uh, to give you an example, maybe um, in the healthy farms during the, uh, those 12 first weeks, we didn't really find mycoplasma high pneumonia, uh, pneumonia as such, whereas in the diseased farms we did, and very often even, like up to 40%. Um, so to, to sum up, really, what we found is that these techniques, so BioCheck, Healthy Climate Solutions, and uh, Pathosense are really useful tools for the practitioners um, to use to identify different kinds of problems on the farms. Do you think, Friso, the best application of those sorts of tools is from a prognosis standpoint? So I use the tools to try and predict what is my future of my farm, so to say, or is it more from a, an investigative standpoint? I know that my health is challenged. Let me use those tools to try and dive into why is my health challenged and maybe some parameters or some areas I could improve to, to, to make my overall health situation better. I think you can, honestly, you can use it for both. So uh, we looked at both situations during this project. And on the one hand, you can find even those healthy farms, it wasn't ideal, so to speak. So they were really high performers, uh, top-notch growth, top-notch feed conversion. But even there, even on the biosecurity, on the environment and on the pathogen load, you can really still improve. Um, so you can use it from... Uh, yeah, a kind of preventative or monitoring uh, measure, but you can also use it in acute situations, uh, all three of them. So, for example, you have a diseased farm, you have, for example, uh, recurrent a uh, APP outbreaks, and you want to find out, okay, what's going on with the biosecurity, then you can use that screening method to see, okay, this is what's going wrong. These are the different par parameters that score less than the benchmark, just as an example. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. Let's talk a little bit, Friso, about um, how you collected the, the parameter information. Let's start with the environmental monitors. 
were those environmental monitors um, long-term installed monitors at the farm, something the farmer uses routinely, or was that something you or your team brought into the farm, used one time, but we just used it in that one point in time? Yeah, so uh, again, depending on which part of the project we're looking at, if we're looking at the healthy uh, farms, we used it, uh, we moved it together with the pigs that we followed up. Okay. So if the pigs were uh, weaned, for example, we moved it to the, the nursery. If the pigs were moved to uh, the fattening unit, then it was used in the fattening unit. So that was more of a longitudinal follow-up. Mm -hmm. um, I have heard, however, that some farmers are starting to implement it on the regular. Mm -hmm. um, and then for the diseased part, it was really in acute uh, situations where, for example, occurring, but also acute problems. Uh, that we hung up the sensor to see what's going on at that time and does it fit uh, or do the, does the environment fit the, the animals on uh, on that specific time point. How about on the uh, metagenomics? You mentioned that as being part of your pathogen surveillance. What sort of samples did you collect for that testing? So for the metagenomics, we selected three sample types, uh, specifically in Belgium. The other partners had some difficulty, but they also selected uh, two of the sample types. The first one being nasal swabs as a screening method, which is routinely used in uh, swine uh, as for swine practitioners. And we also used tracheobronchial swabs. So what we did is that we went a little deeper into the, uh, the respiratory tract to really see um, what's going on in, in, inside of the lungs or at least inside of the trachea of the, of the animal. And we also used uh, rectal swabbing for, but again, this is for uh, the healthy farms. Uh, for the diseased farms, it depended on um, which clinical signs that we could see. So, for example, if uh, there was excessive sneezing, then we took uh, nasal swabs. If there was excessive coughing, we took tracheobronchial swabs. And if there were uh, problems with diarrhea or a stool, uh, uh, yeah, the consistency of the stool, then we took a rectal samples. So what I would say is that really it depends on the clinical signs that you see in practice, if you don't just want to uh, monitor your animal health, uh, it depends on the clinical signs in practice, which samples you're going to use. Very good. Excellent information. It's a very interesting project and I really appreciate you coming on to share those updates with us, Friso. Thank you very much, Clayton. It was fun to be here. Well, we got to thank the audience because to be honest with you, Friso, we certainly couldn't do this podcast if we didn't have people tuning in and listening. Uh, so thanks to everybody who has joined in to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. Check out our website at swinehealthblackbelt.com if you have not. And please do like and subscribe to the podcast, uh, forward it to a friend. It is uh, free and we, we certainly hope you find it of value. Uh, so share it with those in your personal community so they can uh, find uh, all the good work that Friso and our other researchers that come on the show do. For Friso Griffin, I am Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thank you so much for being a part of the show, and we look forward to being with you again next week. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health-related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.